Welcome to the program. You've been listening to some of the reporting just, just airing just before you, and you're obviously seeing everything that's going on uh, around you. Tell me first what has been going through your head and your heart since October 7th. Well, since October 7th, um, uh, everything has changed in some ways. And in other ways, everything is... My, my worst fears are coming true. Um, I, uh, as you mentioned, uh, I fought in Gaza in 2014. Uh, that war was also preceded by a horrific terrorist attack, just like we saw on October 7th. Three Israeli teenagers were kidnapped and murdered which led to a... Oh. Don't worry. Sorry. Don't worry. Which led, which led to a horrific... Uh, which led to the uh, firing of rockets, a, a, a massive crackdown on Hamas in the West Bank, and the firing of rockets, and then a ground invasion. Uh, the, the images uh, that uh, everyone is seeing, that I'm seeing, remind me very vividly of that fighting. Um, and... Frankly, it's, it's my worst fears because uh, many people, colleagues uh, uh, in the Israeli peace camp, in the Israeli anti-occupation camp, have been warning for so many years, saying that uh, there is no military solution. We can't just manage the conflict and maintain uh, a, a, a very, very brutal military uh, regime of control over Palestinians. Uh, that actually plays into the hands of Hamas and plays into the hands of these murderous uh, terrorist groups. Uh, and so uh, all I've been doing since then is trying to share my message, try to share my experience, and try to avoid making the same mistakes that we made in 2014 when Hamas only got stronger after we bombed them and killed thousands and we struck them a, a decisive blow, or that's at least what I thought at the time, but I only saw afterwards that my own government strengthen Hamas. You know, it's pretty intense to hear you say that. Look, we know that the majority of your country right now is in favor of this war. They might not be in favor of the current government, but they definitely believe that somehow, somewhere, um, Hamas has to be defeated. You're saying it can't be done militarily. Tell us, I guess the first question really is to you, are you out of step with the majority of your country people right now? And are you able still to talk about, you know, what you saw, what you feel, what you've learned, how you've changed? Yeah, well, I'll add, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a pacifist. I believe that Israel has the responsibility to defend itself against Hamas. And, of course, uh, that includes military uh, actions, but I think that right now in Israeli society, there's a debate going on as to whether this war that we're fighting should be against Hamas or it should it be against the Palestinian people. And you have uh, members of this current government who have said since the horrific atrocities that we saw in October on October 7th against Israeli civilians and the kidnapping of Israeli uh, civilians who are still being held, they have made it clear that they uh, aren't differentiating between civilians and, 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 uh, and Hamas. Uh, even last night, a senior member of the coalition, sorry, on Saturday night, senior member of the coalition, of the, a member of the cabinet, Bezalel Smotrich, the finance minister and the minister overseeing uh, the West Bank in the Ministry of Defense, said that he doesn't really see a big difference between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. The Arabs are the same Arabs. So, there are many Israelis who disagree with that, and there are many Israelis who are questioning the assumptions uh, and, and questioning the lies that they've been told for so many years. And maybe it is a majority who has uh, believed the lies that our government has told us. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, I think that this is an opportunity for, for uh, partners uh, of mine in the Israeli peace camp. I saw many of my... Uh... Yes? I can hear you. Let me ask you another question, Bensi. Let me ask you another question. Um, OK. Bensi, your line has dropped. We're going to redial you, and we're going to bring you back. We're going to bring you back, OK? So, 
stand by and we'll bring you back. I want to ask you again about the op-ed, the article you wrote for the New York Times, describing what it was like, you know, in the deployment in 2014 in Gaza. You wrote, you know, that some of your soldiers were feeling doubts at that time, and then you wrote your own thoughts on a piece of paper. And you wrote this. I wrote that some members of my team had been tallying the number of soldiers killed and discussing whether this operation was worth the losses. I think it could be worth it, I wrote, as long as we decisively eliminate the threat. That's the lie they told us and the lie that's being repeated today, that we can decisively eliminate the threat of Hamas through a military operation. Bensi, how did you come to the conclusion that you couldn't? Well, um, you know, one of the voices uh, that I've listened to over the years and ha I've been convinced by is not, ju not just the voices of human rights activists, but also the voice of the former head of the Shin Bet, Ami Ayalon, uh, who's the top counterterrorism expert and, and, uh, for four and a half years in the, in the country. And he said this openly. He said the only way to decisively defeat uh, 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 the terrorism that Hamas represents is through creating an alternative and creating hope. Uh, and that means working towards a political solution. And uh, our current government has been fundamentally uh, committed to opposing a political solution and to preventing uh, the creation of a Palestinian state and preventing Palestinian independence. So therefore, I, that's why I realize that a military alone will not defeat Hamas. Uh, and, uh, and that's why I think that our government needs to be changed immediately. So let me ask you then as well, because you talk a, a lot in your op-ed about what you saw in Gaza in 2014. Tell me, because earlier you said you don't believe that the soldiers distinguish carefully enough between civilians and Hamas fighters. What did you yourself experience to make you say that? Well, uh, you know, uh, in the area that we went, uh, we were told that uh, all the civilians had fled, and that was true for the most part, but it wasn't entirely true. We did find civilians. Uh, there was an entire family in the second neighborhood that, that my unit took over. There was an entire family who stayed behind. Uh, and the soldiers, uh, you know, luckily, when they entered the house, they didn't kill them through live fire. Uh, they gave them food and water. They guarded them for many days. But when we pulled out, the Air Force uh, flew overhead and bombed the entire neighborhood. Uh, and, and eight members of that family were killed. I learned this later. So I've seen this with my own eyes. And I'm not, and I'm listening today, I'm listening to my own leaders, uh, including who I mentioned, uh, Bitsala Smotrich, who said he doesn't really differentiate between uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority, which recognizes Israel and wants to negotiate with Israel, and Hamas, which is the terrorist organization that carried out these atrocities. They're, the Arabs are the Arabs. That's what he said on Saturday night on Israeli television. So uh, it's hard for me to believe. I don't believe it. I've seen it with my own eyes. I don't believe that Israel is doing everything in its power to prevent civilian casualties based on the statements of members of the Likud and other members of the coalition. And I think that that's a result of the fact that this government doesn't view the Palestinian people as the future partners for making peace with. Uh, and they are just convinced that overwhelming military power is going to bring us safety and security. And this is... a uh, catastrophic mistake. It's the same catastrophic mistake that led us to the, the horrific uh, 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 events of uh, October 7th. Mm -hmm. And we absolutely need to change that. We need our, our partners abroad. We need the U.S. government. Also, I'm an Israeli, uh, but I'm also an American. And I expect that the American government also not just pay lip service to the idea of uh, pursuing a political solution. You know, settlements are expanding at, a, at an incredible rate. Uh, settlers are illegally taking over land, not even according to international law, according to Israeli law. They're going out and they're shooting at uh, Palestinian civilians, and there's no, uh, with impunity, there's no real enforcement against them. Uh, and so uh, I think the, uh, our international uh, partners and allies need to take a stance on the side of the Israelis who are demanding a uh, political solution and are demanding uh, uh, differentiation and that the, our government uh, make sure not to uh, uh, harm and kill uh, innocent civilians. Um, Bensi, obviously they tell us endlessly that they are doing their best, uh, but you can see allies like the United States are getting increasingly worried, not to mention everybody on the ground about the civilian toll. 
Um, there is, there are stories uh, a lot about dissent being quashed in Israel. Are you not worried about what you're saying to me publicly now, uh, and being accused of siding with the enemy and the kind of things that are getting some Israelis in trouble? You know, uh, it's it's a risk that I have to take for the future of the pe the, the people in it, of Israel. Uh, you know, uh, uh, siding with the enemy would be ironic for my government to accuse me after my government, uh, in order to prevent a Palestinian state, actually facilitated the transfer of hundreds of millions of dollars to Hamas uh, and uh, preferred to sh bolster Hamas uh, and to uh, uh, delegitimize the Palestinian Authority and Palestinian human rights organizations. They designated Palestinian human rights organizations as terrorist organizations. They, ca they uh, categorized Palestinian diplomatic initiatives as Palestinian, uh, as diplomatic terrorism. But Hamas, uh, they facilitated the transfer of hundreds of millions of dollars. And they also crushed Palestinian hopes of independence, which also fed uh, the fuel of Hamas, because that's what, uh, Hamas is the enemy of peace. And uh, when our government uh, committed itself to preventing a peace process and preventing negotiations, they were actually helping Hamas. Ben C. Sanders, thank you very much. And, and what you've just said has been uh, confirmed by, by very many people. And obviously, we know that governments were encouraged to try to make Gaza and Hamas sort of economically OK, thinking that the threat had subsided. But clearly, we know that it had not. Bensi Sanders, thank you very much.